Kawhi Leonard unhappy. Kevin Durant disses Clint Capella. A new team interested in DeAndre Jordan. The saddest firing ever. False accusations and nine games of NBA action. All that coming up in five, four, three. Yo, what up guys? It's me, Zach Lee, back bringing you some more daily NBA news. You guys already know that you are the real MVPs for coming back each and every single day. Can't thank you enough, but let's not waste any more time. Let's just get into everything that went down yesterday. Lego. How in the world did they manage to do this? I don't know. There was a commotion caused about Kawhi Leonard yesterday. He was one of the few players in the NBA where I thought it wasn't possible for him to pop up in the news for something like this. Yet reporters still managed somehow to stir up some controversy surrounding Kawhi Leonard. Yesterday, ESPN released an article titled Sources Kawhi Leonard's Rehab Creating Chilling Effect with the Team. And in this article, they were basically trying to say that Kawhi Leonard and his camp weren't happy with the way the Spurs were handling his rehab process. Months of discord centering on elements of treatment rehabilitation and timetables for a return from right quad triceps injury have chilling effect on san antonio spurs star Kawhi Leonard's relationship with the franchise and the coaching staff later going on to say that Kawhi Leonard and his camp are distant and disconnected from the organization and once again this news is out of nowhere when i saw this it was one of those things where i read the title and it was like how can this be true then i saw it was reported by adrian wajanowski one of the better reporters that espn has so i gave it a read over just to check it out to see what going on and like I thought according to multiple sources within the San Antonio Spurs organization and on Kawhi Leonard's camp this isn't true there is nothing true to that story Kawhi Leonard's camp and the Spurs are how they always been doing the right team for the thing and the right thing for Kawhi and then the GM of the Spurs RC Buford also came forward and said that the reports are not true there is no issue between the Spurs organization and Kawhi from day one all parties have worked together to find the best solutions to his injury also saying this has been difficult for everyone it's been difficult for Kawhi he is an elite level a player it's been difficult for the team because they want to play with a great teammate and it's been difficult for our staff historically we've been able to successfully manage injuries the rehab hasn't been simple and it hasn't gone in a linear fashion after hearing all of that i only have one question how on earth could they have gotten this story so wrong if i was a reporter and one of my sources came to me saying there is a rift between Kawhi leonard and the san antonio spurs i am not believing it and i'm finding new sources that being said i don't doubt the fact that Kawhi leonard could be kind of frustrated frustrated and upset at the moment but I don't think he's upset with the Spurs just think about it if you miss the first 30 games of the year with a quadriceps injury you come back and then you go down with a shoulder injury cause you to miss a couple more games you come back again only to have to sit out again because of the same injury that had you miss the first 30 games of the season. Despite what some of us might think, Kawhi Leonard is only human. Even he has to feel some type of anger and frustration. And I think he might right now, but I don't think it's geared at the Spurs. It's more of a why is this happening to me type anger or frustration. The level of dis respect i can already feel the triggering of rockets fans that is about to occur clint capella is one of every rockets fans favorite player they love the guy but kevin durant decided he had to let him have it yesterday remember after the rockets beat the warriors and clint capella came out and said that the rockets when healthy are the best team in the nba better than the golden state warriors well yeah katie caught wind of that and this was his response to it yesterday no i'm saying to myself i'm saying to myself i mean I mean, you, you hear that from the guys like Capella, you know, who usually is catching the ball and laying it up from, one, from CP or James Harden. So his job is not as hard. I mean, when your job is that hard, you know you know you can't just come out there and say shit like that. You know what I'm saying? So I don't expect that from CP and James and Reza and the rest of the guys because they know how hard it is to come out there and do that every night. Capella, I mean, catch a dunk every night, so it's pretty easy for him. He basically said, Clint Capella, you ain't a good enough player to be making a kind of statement like that. Stay in your lane. Rockets fans, don't shoot the messenger. This was KD saying it. I'm just letting you know what he said. Personally, I think Clint Capella is a really nice young player. And KD, I'm not sure if you're giving Clint Capella enough credit here by saying his job is too easy. Sure, his way of scoring might be easier than your way of scoring or James Harden's way of scoring or Chris Paul's way of scoring, but that's not his job on the Houston Rockets. His job isn't to go out there and score. It's to get rebounds and defend the paint. Both of those things he does extremely well that's why you guys always hear me call him deandre jordan 2.0 but a better free throw shooter 14.5 points 11 rebounds one and a half blocks per game in 26 minutes it ain't like he's zaza patrulia kevin durant and i'm sure now click Capella is going to be playing with an extra chip on his shoulder 
the next time he plays you guys. News broke that Damian Lillard had requested a private meeting with Blazers owner Paul Allen. Now the meeting reportedly happened a few days ago, but we are just now learning about it. And when Paul Allen originally heard that Lillard requested a meeting, he was terrified. He thought that Dame was going to request a trade, but it turned out to be the opposite, as Lillard just let him know that he intends to stick around and win a championship in Portland. But that winning a championship is also his goal, and he wanted to make sure that the right moves were being made so that that goal can be accomplished. So it sounds like Damian Lillard will be loyal to the Blazers as long as the Blazers are loyal to his goals, as long as they keep making moves to try and make the team better. And is it a coincidence that now we're also getting reports about the Blazers being interested in trading for DeAndre Jordan? I don't think it is. Paul Allen heard Damian Lillard's request like, hold up, let me make some trades to keep this guy happy because if this guy leaves, I lose my job, this franchise is doomed, and uh, yeah, that's the end of that story. So the Blazers are interested in DeAndre Jordan, however reports also came out yesterday that the Clippers haven't been happy with any of the offers including the Blazers that they have gotten for DeAndre Jordan. Here's the thing LA, you gotta realize that DeAndre Jordan is about to leave you for nothing in a few months. So the situation you're in right now is take what you can get for DeAndre Jordan and be happy or don't complain or say anything when he leaves you for nothing in a few months. Things got even worse for the Cleveland Cavaliers yesterday. How that is possible, I do not know. I mean yesterday we talked talked about the Washington Wizards holding an emergency player only meeting and in that video I joked that the Cleveland Cavaliers should be holding the same type of meetings considering how their games have been going and as it turns out the Cleveland Cavaliers did hold an emergency player meeting yesterday and as it also turns out things really aren't so great amongst the players in Cleveland. Reports have it the Cavs players started pointing fingers at each other and especially at Kevin Love who they think was faking his illness when he set out the game against the Thunder on Saturday. The Cleveland Cavaliers Cavaliers held an emotional team meeting prior to Monday's practice, where several players challenged the legitimacy of Kevin Love leaving in the OKC laws on Saturday ill and missing Sunday's practice. In a locker room increasingly full of finger pointing, Love defended himself and explained his side to his teammates, coaches, and management. At the end of the meeting, there was a sense that the team had worked out some issues, but ultimately that remains to be seen. Even amongst Cavs players, it seems like Kevin Love is a black sheep, the guy who gets blamed when things aren't going going right. This whole thing is is a terrible look for the Cleveland Cavaliers. Do you know why? Because it shows there is no trust amongst the players. The guys are coming out accusing Kevin Love of faking being sick. It clearly shows that they do not trust each other. I think if I was Love and guys came at me accusing me of bailing on the team faking sick so I wouldn't have to play against the Thunder and missing practice, I'd be like, trade me i don't want to be here anymore clearly you guys don't trust me i was here since the beginning i won a championship with you guys i sacrificed more of my game than anyone else here i went from a guy who was seen as maybe a future mvp level player to a freaking ryan anderson why so we could win games and now you guys are accusing me of faking sick and bailing on the team. Oh, I would be hated if I was Kevin Love. Then again, this is me assuming that Kevin Love is innocent here and that he wasn't faking. I guess I'm just giving him the benefit of the doubt. But just the distrust alone to accuse him, it's terrible. This has got to be one of the saddest coaching firings that honestly I have ever seen. And it's not the firing itself, it's the story behind it. Now at this point, I know all of you guys have already heard that Jason Kidd was let go by the Milwaukee Bucks. The Bucks said it's because they are disappointed where the team is. They're currently 8th in the Eastern Conference, and that's despite trading for a point guard like Eric Bledsoe earlier in the season. So it is kind of understandable it does have some people torn as to whether or not he should have been fired but once again it's just the story behind it that's almost a tearjerker just take a listen to the final conversation between jason kidd and Giannis on the kumpo he called me and said coach this isn't right what they're about to do they're gonna let you go kid said that he replied i had a feeling that this was gonna take place then Giannis said what can i do i'll call the owners no, i'll call my agent there's nothing you can do all you can do is tell the truth that's it. Then Kid said he thanked Giannis for his loyalty and that he was able to coach him and help him become the player he is today and that when they cross paths again, he will be a much better player. This is like some stuff straight out of a movie, except by the tone of the dialogue, it sounds like Jason Kidd is dying on his deathbed and then Giannis is over there crying, holding his hand. It, it sounds like something straight out of a movie. I just have 
one more question. How on earth was Jason Kidd fired before Tyron Lue? What do you guys think about all of this though? About the Cavs meeting, about Jason Kidd being fired, anything we just talked about, let your voices be heard down in the comment section below. But now we gotta take a real, real, real quick look at the nine games from last night. Without Jimmy Butler in the lineup in Minnesota, Andrew Wiggins continues to step up to the plate. He had his biggest game of the season so far, scoring 40 points to lead Minnesota to the 126 to 118 win over LA, despite Blake Griffin also having a good game himself with 32 points, 12 rebounds, and 12 assists. Every time there is a double, triple, or quadruple overtime game even, it seems like the Chicago Bulls are a part of it. And sadly, it seems like they are always the ones that come up on the losing end of it too. As DeMarcus Cousins was not going to let the New Orleans Pelicans lose last night. 44 points, 24 rebounds, 10 assists, and four steals as well. That's just unstoppable on a whole nother level. And he was the first player since Kareem Abdul-Jabbar back in 1972 to post a stat line like that. That's crazy. 132 to 128, the final score. The Houston Rockets are still undefeated when the trio of Chris Paul, James Harden, and Clint Capella all take the floor. So maybe there was a little bit of facts behind Capella's statement about them being the best team in the league when healthy. 99 to 90, the final score of Miami. James Harden dropping 28 points and only going to the free throw line four times. I guess it's time for John Wall to call the front office about some change like he said he was going to do if they had another bad loss. The Wizards got stomped on by the Mavs, 98 to 75. Harrison Barnes with 20 points and 10 rebounds. And in the fourth quarter, John Wall and JJ Barea had some word. JJ Barea got hit with the tech. And after the game, John Wall said, quote it was cool to me it was funny he's just a little midget trying to get mad that has got to be one of the most disrespectful quotes i have ever heard michael jordan said yes that he is only willing to trade kemba walker for another all-star level player which I don't really understand. I thought he'd be looking for young players or draft picks in order to rebuild, not just swapping Walker for another star player on the same level because that won't really help them. Anyway, Charlotte won yesterday over the Kings, 112 to 107. Walker with 26 points and nine assists. The Bucks won their first game without Jason Kidd and they didn't have Giannis either. Sounds impressive until you realize that it was against the Suns, 109 to 105. Chris Milton with 35 points and Malcolm Brockton was balling as well with 32. Yusuf Nurkic said that he had been waiting for this moment since he was traded to be able to play the Nuggets on their home court. And he was playing with more aggression than normal last night and he had a solid game because of it. 19 points and 12 rebounds, but the Blazers still lost, 104 to 101 because of Jamal Murray, who has really been coming alive in his past few games. He scored a career high 38 points to go along with six assists. Tyreek Evans and Marcus Gasol were able to mount a comeback in the fourth quarter to get the Grizzlies the 105 to 101 win over the Sixers. Philly often looks like a really good team for the first three quarters. They just have a bad habit of blowing leads late. Gasol had 19, Evans had 18, while Sarge led Philly with 22. Lastly, the Hawks beat the Jazz as Atlanta has now won three of their last four games. Round of applause. 104 to 90, the final score in this one. Schroeder dropped 20. That wraps up all the action from last night. The hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, don't forget to smack that like button and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on more daily NBA news as well as join the quest of 200K hashtag a million a year. Remember to vote for the player of the day, but also remember the only players whose team won are eligible to win said player of the day. And yesterday, that player was Jordan Clarkson with his 29 points, 10 assists, 6 rebounds, and 3 steals. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see all of you right back here tomorrow for more daily NBA news. But until then, I'm out of here. Peace.